And we are live back for some Heslip Tech Talk. So happy to be with you all. My name is Joel for JCH Mobile, this channel that you're at, or maybe if you just stumbled upon, upon this randomly in a live section somehow. Hello and welcome. I'm here with the brothers Heslip Tech talking tech with them. <laughs> Every week we have a fun way of introducing silly tech talkness. Uh, Jeremy, would you like to introduce yourself to the tech talkers? Absolutely. Would I like to talk the tech with the tech talk? Um, <laughs> Jeremy Huslop, uh, owner and operator of Omni Tech Pro, where we take your IT strategy to the next level for your business. Noise. Uh, Sir Joshertons Fieldsville, would you like to introduce yourself? To the tech techers. It's Joshua Fourteenville. Okay, that's okay. that's oh. how it works. Okay. All oh. right. <laughs> uh, Josh Hessel here, and you can find me at youtubecom slash Joshua Fourteen or Joshua .net. and I do Surface Pro gaming benchmarks and game All streams and lots of tech goodness and some sweet giveaways too so stick around get on it get down on it <laughs> <laughs> there's so many old school songs i love it well starting us out today uh there's some drama well not really drama but some uh some old school memories talking of old school old school memories that might be might be ending here josh what is happening with the beloved microsoft paint so uh if you were living under a rock, uh, you probably didn't hear that Microsoft said, hey, when do, Microsoft Paint's going to be going away because of Paint 3D and everything like that. Uh, but Megan Saunders from the Microsoft blog put everyone, their uh, fears to rest, and she said, MS Paint is here to stay. But yes! it's... It's going to the Windows Store, so you got to have at least Windows 8. But I, I'm assuming that you can sideload it on Windows 7 or whatever. Or <laughs> if you really X want it, that's your daily driver. You use it every X XP or Windows 3.1. Um, yeah, Windows Windows Store, where all the apps go to die, of course. Um, <laughs> I but, actually uh, record all these videos in Microsoft Paint. It's crazy. Wow, wow. So, uh, But Paint 3D is pretty cool. Uh, I've used some of the 3D features and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Well, nice. I like it. Is, is Paint 3D like the paint their Paint.net app? Uh, did it get renamed to that or something? Um. Well, they added a bunch of stuff from the creators update. So you've got 2D lining cur curve tools, photo editing now, and a bunch of stuff. And that's a little more beefy. Yeah. A little bit so, more. Uh, it's possible that Paint.net is not Microsoft. So, yeah, I don't. I don't think it is. So, I uh, gotcha. Microsoft Paint for life, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Who needs Photoshop? Who needs Lightroom? You got Microsoft Paint. That's all hey, you need. I mean, hey, come on. I, it's all about the I, pixels. When I go to Paint.net, it brings me to WarrenPaint.com, which is a a paint and color company. I think you said Microsoft Paint, or didn't you say? What did you say? Paint? Uh, it's, it's called GetPaint.net. Oh, get paint. Get paint .net. Yeah, it's basically just like the paint app, but it's all written in, in .NET code, so it's not like the old 16-bit stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's it's a um, – it's definitely – oh, well. Nah. It's a little step up from paint, but it's it's kind of like a, a GIMP it's, or Photoshop light, yeah. very light. It's, light. A, it's a registered trademark of .pdn LLC. Mike so, said he's not in Adobe CC. He doesn't need it anymore. He's got the paint.net. So, hey, man. Um, yeah. Where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, uh, speaking of some new changes, Jeremy, there's there's some more rumbly rumblies in the iPhone 8 world that everybody loves to see. What's happening? Yes. Yeah, I saw this come across today, and I just kind of was mouth agape because um, I'm not sure if this is real or just uh, some – uh, random fodder that has been coming. I want it to be real. Line. I believe. Um, well, I kind of did some some comparisons here. So the latest news is the leak about the new feature that people have been clamoring about, which is uh, wireless charging on the iPhone 8, which everybody expects it to be on there. However, I see this picture of this component, 
and I compared it like I just you know cropped it down so it looked like the lightning port was on the lightning port on my phone, uh -huh. and that component takes up about a third of the PCB. Size. Yes, so oh, the this, PCB, this PCB wow. here is like insanely huge, and unless it's like multiple components combined, other than the wireless uh, Qi charging or something like that, uh, I I call bollocks on this, especially since the little teeny bollocks. things are are like you know the little iPhone thing is is blurred out right here. <laughs> you know, well, like, what what if it's an actually what if that's actually the the PCB for the pad? It, it, that's possible. It could be for like the other yeah. side. Uh, but yeah, then that's what this, I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. So if this is the lightning port on that side, then then this makes a lot more sense. Um, but if this is the side for the phone, then then there's absolutely no way this is the right one. Um, yeah. First of all, this looks like like some Mickey Mouse. You know, elect electrical person from high school made, oh, made really? the PCB and put the components <laughs> on there. I mean, um, not that it's bad, but it's it doesn't look um, like Apple esque. Like they over engineer everything, especially when it comes to third party components. Even um, so, uh, you know, maybe it is. Maybe it's a third party um, a wireless charger that is going to be compatible with the new iPhone eight or something like that. But the good news is that if this is an actual um, charger, then then that means that the iPhone 8 will have uh, wireless charging. To me, I'm kind of, you know, yeah, if it has it, fine. If it doesn't, you know, fine. Um, but, mm. uh, you know, it's interesting to say the least. <laughs> you can still just slap one of those, you know, stickers that Cases. has the... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, the sticker oh. for the wireless charger that plugs into the, the um, lightning port, which is very simple because the lightning port is so thin. Um, you know, you can kind of pull the tab off and and continue to use it like normal. Well, it, it's interesting because I really think that iPhone is going to have to do something special in this next model. That that's the kind of the it factor because there's they're kind of pushing, getting pushback now from LG and from Samsung and others that are pushing the envelope of some displays and some things. So. If, if they don't have a, a crazy good display or something that they're going to keep losing because they're losing customers as it is, uh, I mean, not like they're hurting at all, but um, it'll be interesting to see whether it's wireless charging or like the uh, fingerprint sensor under the display or something like that that's going to help push uh, the iPhone forward. I, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, yeah, they're it'll, definitely going to need something. It'll be interesting to see what that it factor is, but... Hey, I, I think it's you're going to be able to force touch your finger all the way through the phone. Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like squeezing your phone, you know. <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. The new feature. <laughs> maybe, it'll, maybe it'll be you squeeze your phone from the top to the bottom, and it knows where you're doing that. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> just, like the, just like the HTC has on the side squeeze and the new uh, <laughs> Samsung. That's awesome. Uh, well, speaking of things that are pushing the edge... We got uh, Moto has released their their Z model. They had the Z Force uh, this past month or past year that people really liked, um, but were a little questionable. So now they have the Z Two Force. So this is their next modular phone uh, that has me excited, but has a lot of questions. So this is a, a the Z Two model of the original. Um, and it's got pretty solid big bezels, which isn't so great, but it does have a dual camera system with one of those being a monochrome sensor to bring uh, more uh, detail to the picture and uh, creating a bokeh effect to your images. Uh, and then they did still don't have a headphone jack on here. It's still only the lightning port, lightning port on the, I mean, not lightning, USB-C on the bottom, just talking about lighting. Uh, you will get a, a sweet adapter in your box, uh, and uh, you know that goodness there. You have the gold model, the black model, um, gold with the white here. Uh, the most thing that makes me scratch my head that is gonna, I think, bite them in the butt a little bit is the fact that they do only have a 2,700 milliamp hour battery in this bad boy. Uh, so it's a 5.5 inch uh, quad HD. Uh, display, but it's it's only gonna be a twenty seven or twenty uh, twenty seven hundred milliamp hour battery. So, uh, you know the reason they're doing this is because there's gonna be 
battery pack mods, moto mods on this guy, because that's the big thing is this bottom here has, you know, your moto mods to be able to put on a speaker, put on a bigger battery, et cetera. But gosh, golly, a base rate of only 2,700 is, is pretty low in comparison to today's standards. So it's hard for me to say with the Snapdragon 835, uh, with, uh, you know, four gigs of RAM, that's that's pushing it for a, a flagship model to only have that much on it. Um, but they do tout this shattered shield technology, which is saying that you can drop that bad boy on the screen no matter what. It's going to be uh, doing that. And it's saying a four-year warranty against shattering and cracking on your screen. That's that's unheard of. I haven't heard that. I've seen a, a year, a two-year uh, warranty from from some of them, but a four-year warranty, that's, that's a bold step from – the motos um but chat has no like button yeah uh the chat's still getting some work with live chat there um but yeah so so this might be one that you, you're not gonna have to worry about so much with uh a case on it or whatever but um yeah do you have a donate button right um i i have a, a theory that the, the uh user base of this or the the reviewers are going to be like Four phones and seven shatters ago, my Moto Z2 Force. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't know. Wow. I, this is interesting. This is kind of to me like them trying to do something different. The only thing, though, I have seen with these shatterproof cameras, I mean, shatterproof screens, that uh, Motorola produced one. I'm trying to remember which one it was, the, the Mac something or other, that had a shatterproof screen. It, you could scratch the heck out of it, though. Um, that it was super scratched because it was almost plasticky. The screen wasn't glass. It was some type yeah. of plastic mix. So sure, you could drop it on its face as much as you want, but you're going to have these little splintered scratches that are going to run all over your screen. It's going to start becoming unusable because of those screen uh, scratches. So I haven't been able to use this device yet. Uh, it doesn't come out in stores till August 10th, but it will be on AT&T. Sprint, T-Mobile, U.S. Cellular, Verizon, and in Best Buy stores. So it'll be super well, um, you know, marketed. I know the me, uh, the Z Force, the original one, was in Best Buy stores. You could play with it. You could put on the screen on the uh, extra uh, mods on the back of it. So, but, so we'll see. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts on this? I, I don't know. I, this is just another iteration of the phone to me, but who knows? This phone can get on the bus and get out of here. <laughs> it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, the mods, how, how interesting they are. I mean, that's, they're going to have to come up with some really good ones to um, make it differentiate from the other flagships and things like that. So, you know, from projectors to extra batteries to storage to, um, you know, better cameras, that type of stuff was interesting on the last Moto, but... That didn't I do want that a, well either. So I want a Super NES Classic mod. Oh my god! I want to just like go. add it on, Make it. <laughs> use the display, and it has a controller built in, and I'm just playing Super Nintendo. I'm sure they could do that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can already do it with emulators. What am I saying? But right. well, I mean, physical it's, keyboard it's, or physical um, app, though. You know the the uh, game. Yeah. You know, game the pad. physical uh, physical unit that I liked was um, it was a Game Boy. Uh, it was like basically the same size as an actual Game Boy that clicked on the bottom of your phone to give oh, the yeah. physical buttons, and you could put in the cartridges of yes. Game Boy games. Yes, and it would download your progress from the game on the physical thing, so it would emulate your actual game. So if you were halfway through a game but wanted to play it on your phone now instead of your Game Boy, and then it colorized some of the things too, which was cool because um, it found. The the new mo, you know new emulation for it so kind of interesting I'm I'm excited to um, I'm excited to see where this phone will go I think it'll have a cool market for people that really want to get the mods but right at the bat I think you're gonna have to buy the battery mod I don't to me maybe they're doing some crazy juju with the the processor and stuff like that and are able to get better battery life but I don't see it here I think you're barely gonna get through a day on the battery life so. Um, I think right out the bat, you're going to have to buy the left 40 to $60 moto mod for, uh, the battery. So I don't know. That seems like, uh, 
a what is it called when you uh, feign incompetence in your technology so you'll buy more things you know it's like needing all these dongles needing all the motor mods um, what so what the, about what about uh, third party companies have they come up with the like mod third party mods for the moto <clears throat> first moto Z ones yeah some other companies uh, like Dolby <coughs> excuse me Dolby did uh, a speaker for it and a couple other things did things for it but they have to be licensed by them uh, oh, and, and so as far as I know you know you're still running through that so prices are kind of adjustable that way I don't know it's it'll be interesting to see no uh, doubt but well cool moving right along Josh what kind of uh, things with this AMD Radeon RX are pumping out now Man, another uh, benchmark got leaked for the Vega, the Radeon RX Vega from AMD, which is their new amazing graphics card uh, that apparently can't even beat the 1080. So, uh, <laughs> but you know, we don't know. This is just the 3D Mark Fire Strike performance uh, GPU test. So uh, they have three uh, Vega benchmarks right here. Um, one is at core clock of 1536 megahertz. One is at 16 and the other two are at 1630 megahertz at the mega, the memory clock is all 945 megahertz. So, um, and they're all doing around the same 20, almost 21,000 and almost 20, well, 22,200, 300. So, uh, which is just under, uh, the 22,500 of the 1080, but it's the MSI GTX gaming x card uh and but it is beating the colorful gtx 1070 uh at 18,500. so it's in the middle there between 1070 and 1080. so uh very kind of interesting to see um and that's just a bunch more of the actual uh screen capture but um but yeah, it's it's going to be very interesting to see how much this costs when it comes out, because if it if it costs as much as a 1070 and beats a 1070, then I think that will be a good um, a good card to get. So <clears throat> if it's like around three three fifty, it'll be the sweet spot. Yeah, and and that and that's that's very true. It, it all comes down to cost effectiveness because. If somebody, I don't think people really have much of an alliance yet to AMD, so they're not going to be like, "Well, I'm going to get the AMD card because I like it." You know, it, it's going to be what's going to be my best bank for my buck. Well, and, and the, the people who have been with AMD right now have been the people who have gotten the RX 480s, the the 580s, the 570s. You know, that which are still better than this, aren't they? No, it's no, good? like okay. the no, th this is a lot higher end. Okay. So the the 570 and 580 can can go part to par with the 1060. Uh, it's in between the 1060 and 1070, I think. Got it. Um, yeah. So, well, for me right now, I think the for most people, like I, I could would say consumer grade card, the 1050 Ti is great because um, that's going to run most things at high settings, not you know the uber high settings, but like major. Uh, games at 1080p and it'll still be fine. Uh, Stay same tuned for my Amazon referral link. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, for all you either of miners out there. <laughs> if, if someone if, if someone asked me, Joel, what's a card that's a budget card that's still going to be a good solid card? I'm probably going to say 1050 Ti or the 1060. You know. Well, you ask them what kind of monitor they have. Do you have a 1080p monitor? Okay, stick with that card. Do you yep. have a uh, you know, ultra wide, then you're going to need to get at least a 1070. Yeah. But what so. I'm saying is, is I would say 75% or more of people that talk to me about game wanting to get into gaming, they probably have a 1080p regular 1920 by 1080 screen. Yeah. Uh, and you know, are just trying to do that. Now, if you want to future proof it out, you know, you want to get something that's going to do 4k, et cetera. Obviously you're going to want to do 1070 or, or, you know, more, but, um, I like that there's options and that AMD is trying to do stuff, but it's just hard to see it's competitive right now when it's when it's that much more and not really that great. 
So we'll see. These are still, Josh, I guess, a little bit. Josh, these were the ones that were um, targeted at the higher end um, gaming side, right? They're, they're not the um, – the Frontier was the one that was at the more of the Tesla. Yeah, the Frontier was more um, business-grade um, graphics card. The, the Vega is actually the gaming card. So, okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, they basically, and I, I'm thinking that they chose that because it's, it was cheaper to make and have still have smack dab performance with the 10 in between 1070 and 1080. So yeah, which, which makes sense. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Well, moving right along, uh, in Vegas, there's some crazy stuff happening with, with UPS stores. Jeremy, what's the lowdown over there? Yeah, so every year, um, actually, it's uh, happening right now. There are two conferences happening in Vegas. Uh, the first one is Black Hat, which is usually from like Sunday, Monday to uh, Thursday. And then there's another one called DEF CON, which is from uh, today to the weekend. And uh, both of these events pull in security researchers, hackers, and the like from all over the world into Vegas. And so um, there is a UPS store <laughs> that's in the Caesar Palace, where actually DEF CON is, is being held, that uh, put up a sign that got a lot of chuckles from people. And I just I thought it was hilarious, so I figured I'd share. Um, essentially, what's happening is they say, due to the DEF CON hacking convention, we will be accepting email print jobs with attachments only. We will not accept USB prints or any links. So it's... <sighs> Which is kind of stupid, but all every way you look at it, they should just like say we will only print jobs uh, <laughs> that you bring in on a DVD or something like that. Because uh -huh. uh, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I guess I understand. Okay, they bring in a US, uh, USB and they try to hack the UPS store, right? Uh -huh. Or they send them a link that sends them to a a, a site that's gonna. Uh, hack their computer and, and put some kind of malware on on one of their machines or something like that. But if they're sending them an attachment, uh, and they, and that person at the UPS store is silly enough to open the attachment without seeing if it's a uh, you know a clean product or not, then right. uh, then it's the same thing. I, I guess probably they have some kind of email um, scanner or something like that. But it's just funny that they're changing their policies based on. Um, a convention that's in town because uh, there's a lot of a lot of stuff that happens. Essentially, if you are in the area of any uh, DefCon hackers during that convention and you turn your Wi-Fi on your laptop on, you're probably going to connect directly to a device that will essentially root your machine or uh, uh, hack you it in some way. You know, lose access. Um, Terrifying. You're going to be pwned pretty hard. I mean, they, got, <laughs> there's going to be so many pineapples all over the place there and, and so many devices that just want to uh, tear up uh, and, and pen test machines and everything that's going to uh, – it's pretty funny. But I just thought this was interesting because, um, uh, you know, they're actually having to change their policies at, at, a, at a regular store because all, of All of the this printers convention. start printing out all your printers belong to us. <laughs> yeah, I, I get to see like there was some kind of malfeasance that has uh, fun jokes that were going on previous years that this year they're like, no, 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 we're not doing. <laughs> they're, they're, they're terrified. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Uh, digital mischief is what they say. And, uh, ah, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure that ATMs and uh, other Wi-Fis and everybody else is, is getting fun things uh, oh during that. During the DEF CON conference, conference, but I've been to um, I've been to, I went to DEF CON a couple of years ago, and it's a lot of fun. So if you're interested in the security space or or uh, just a, an IT nerd and want to have uh, want to geek out, they have some pretty uh, it's it's pretty cool to go to DEF CON. They have a spot the Fed game, where if you they'll they'll have somebody come up into on on stage and they'll say, okay, look out into the crowd and point to a person you think is a Fed, and then they have to fess up. So they'll, they'll have somebody go up and they'll be like, uh, that guy right there. And it's like, well, why do you think? The, it's the loafers and the, and the polo. That gives it away. <laughs> <laughs> and that person comes up and is like, okay, sir, uh, who do you work for? And he's like, well, I'd rather not say. He's like, Fed! <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's nice. a fun game. Okay. Uh, it, nice. it was pretty good. And they eventually fessed up and said what they were, like, you know, NSA or FBI or local police or whatever it was. But uh, it, it was pretty funny. And then they would say why they're, you know, why they're there, where they came from, what, what department they're in and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a fun time. So there's a lot of people just having a good time. So That's awesome. Well, speaking of a good time, uh, there's a new game that's been highly anticipated that Josh picked up, and he'll talk about it in just a minute. But I'm just going to give you a little bit of overview of what it is. 
But Epic Games has been teasing a game for a while, and it's something that's pretty cool. They call it a mix between uh, like they call it a mix between Left 4 Dead and Minecraft. So it, it's that's a very interesting mix because what you do is it's a zombie builder game where you have to build shelter and protect against waves of zombies with friends, and it is called Fortnite. So don't take shelter, make it. You go through this world and you have all kinds of craziness that you're trying to defend against hordes of zombies. And it's kind of cool because you're building and you're getting bonuses with your friends, you're building traps and structures, you're upgrading. Uh, it's a little bit of a pay to play model because there's a base model that you can spend $40 to play or you can get a special with extra characters for $60, then there's like a $90 or $80 bundle, and then you can go crazy limited edition for $120. Uh, but it's 150. $150. Oh my goodness. So this but that, com that comes with two standard editions of the game for friends to give out. And the, the, the $90 awesome. version comes with one copy, extra copy of the game to give to somebody. So yeah. So each they have a tiering model. Uh, if you go on there, you can uh, see here's all the different. Yeah, it's 150. So like I, the deluxe edition does, you get a whole bunch of extra stuff. Uh, you can go and compare models, uh, compare editions here. So there's all kinds of stuff like a hundred eighty dollar value. You know they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna tell you all the in game currency stuff. But yeah, the deluxe edition kind of seems the best. You you know you get uh, all kinds of stuff. But if you're just bare bones wanting to get into the game, forty bucks, which is pretty cool. But it's a fun, like playful. It's a playful yeah, allows playful <laughs> art style that looks really really cool. Um, and it looks like it, you know a third person type that you get to run around. Josh, what has been your experience so far? How have you liking it? Yeah, so basically uh, I've played probably like six or seven hours so far. And um, judging from the standard edition only gives you the soldier uh, hero, but they have four different classes. There's a constructor which has bonuses for um base building there's a ninja who has melee better damage and then there's a pathfinder who has better loot finding so uh and you will get those extra heroes while doing missions and stuff like that and opening these llamas uh and they have a they, they give you bonus rewards for playing every day and you can get you get a loot box based on your performance in the mission, every single mission you play. And that has chance to get heroes and cards and stuff like that. So if you want to just pay 40 bucks and not pay the extra 20 bucks to get all the heroes, uh, I'd say those two are, are neck and neck for, I, I got the $60 version because I, I say, hey, they give you decent uh, heroes um, level tens, I think. And it gives you some extra, um, stuff uh well, and it gave me like a bunch of um pinata packs so uh those are the loot packs so, so uh, basically and, what's happening right now this is the pre-launch of the game that you're yes. paying to get into it early yes. uh and at, eventually you can actually play this game for free you can download and pre play it as a free to play but you are going to be pretty far behind obviously you're not going to get uh, all the extra items. You're going to have a lot of stuff that's not there. So you're kind of in a, a term. This is almost like a little bit of a Kickstarter that you're supporting Epic to get all their servers up and running, that everything up and running. You obviously get some exclusive Founder Edition items and some special leveling up on your characters. But eventually, you can play it for free on PC. Um, but if you're buying a console actual disc for ps4 or xbox uh it's 60 dollars is going to be the actual disc version and that yeah. will have more unlocked stuff as well like the 60 dollar version for that you can buy now so it's interesting this free to play model that stuff's always happening in the game uh you might have your stuff attacked while you're not there type of thing so i, I haven't done that mode yet so yeah, i'm, I'm just doing the mode where Basically, you're trying to explore and and get your base. Your base has a shield that basically goes out from the storm of all the zombies and try and repel them and stuff like that. So, um, but for 
for what I paid and how the game is running, I've hardly had any bugs since everyone's saying, well, it's early access. So, you know, you're going to have a lot of crap going on. But uh, honestly, it, the shooting is great. The movement is great. Um, you know, and they're from what from what they started like a year ago with the alpha, like from from there to here has been amazing. The progress they've made. So I'm definitely super pumped to see how it works out. And uh, I'm definitely going to be streaming some and uh and trying to get people uh people playing so it's yeah a lot of fun so far yeah so josh will be over on his uh channel joshua 14 youtube.com slash josh 14 we'll be doing some live streams and some uh you know just some gameplay if you want to check it out go over there jeremy i like your comment that you said uh team fortress and seven days to die mix i think the art style kind of looks like team fortress which i love 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 team fortress 2 was one of my favorite shooters favorite games and that's why i love overwatch so much is i feel like it's a spiritual successor to team fortress 2 in a lot of ways they kind of improve some things so thanks paul for uh the encouragement there um that's awesome hey well uh yeah i'm i'm, I'm definitely looking forward to this game i'm trying to decide whether i want to put out the 40 bones to buy it now or wait a bit to play uh we'll see maybe if josh keeps saying how great it is i'll have to Work out some some cash and get it, but it's looking pretty cool. Um, well, speaking of some Dell uh, or some ways to play this game, there's a Dell monitor that's not really what it says it is. What's happening with that, Josh? So uh, this is from PCGamer.com. Dell is catching heat over their HDR monitor specs not being real HDR. Oops. Um, <laughs> so this is the Dell U25 18D. And it says that it offers HDR support, uh, but they're saying it's a marketing ploy. So uh, it's a 25 inch display and they're listing Dell, Dell HDR in the spec sheet. So it's $500, uh, has a 60 Hertz panel, IPS display, 2560 by 1440 resolution, thin bezels and uh, so basically it uses an eight bit panel where it, so HDR 10 needs a 10 bit panel. Um, Crazy. But the, so, but it does have 99% coverage of sRGB and it has 350 nits, which is l unusually low for an HDR display is what they're saying. So they pointed out, uh, Guru3D pointed out the simulated software-based HDR mode that responds to HDR10 content on Dell's display falls short of the color gamut, peak luminance, and bit depth that is necessary for true HDR. So, uh, now, Tom's Hardware also reviewed the larger 27-inch uh, model, the S2718D, says it does not break new ground in contrast it lacks the light output to truly present the full dynamic range of hdr and it doesn't have su sufficiently low black levels so i would probably stay away from these monitors even though they might be cheap um i mean yeah they if they go on sale uh maybe but you know as far as i'm gonna want something that's higher than 60 hertz from here on out so right and that's kind of like the that what they did with marketing for the um, true hertz versus the like what what did they call it like the true vision two forty hertz when it's yeah. really one twenty that they use digitally. That's such a marketing thing that they and I think that they're doing Dell's kind of doing the same thing mm -hmm. that they like pull a uh, you know a blinders over your eyes and like it's hdr cha 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 you know <laughs> they're they're like a little bit of razzle dazzle for you to make you oh, buy yeah. hdr because people just see hdr and they don't do research on it and they think this is the best thing out there right now and they put their money down and buy it you know so if, if they see it in best buy and and getting it yeah same thing with like apple the retina display the best dpi you've ever seen you know, which it's great, and it was on the iPhone 4. Retina display was a big deal, but now retina display is kind of just a, a word to get you to, um, you know, you know, buy things. And it is more pixels, but it's different. So it, they they know how to market 
they they do know how to market to get you to buy things. Um, so uh, for for that for sure. But moving right along here, um, what kind of, what is happening with this Wisconsin company, Jeremy? I I read about this and they kind of freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, so basically, you know, we're all going to have this and the government's going to track us and the world <laughs> is going to end. Uh, no, uh, so a out in Wisconsin um, has implanted microchips into their employees for doing a couple different things. Um, one of them is for purchasing lunch. <laughs> and then the other thing is for um, getting in and out of the office building. Uh, yeah. So it's kind of a mixed uh, review. Some of the stuff, uh, you know, their employees, everybody's pretty much on board. Um, some of them um, are like, they're like, yep, this is the future. We're going to do it. It's not a problem. Some of the engineers were saying. Um, somebody else were like, well, I'll just put it on the ring because uh, I'll always bring the ring with me type thing. Or, you know, yeah. I'll just wear that all the time. So some people are kind of a little bit more hesitant, that type of thing, you know, like the company sales director. Um, but... Um, you know, it, it's kind of a mixed bag, you know, it's, it's like there are downsides to number one, having something inside of you, you know, um, but number two, um, for the privacy implications, like right now it's not being used as uh, tracking somebody else to go to the bathroom or, or when yeah, they're out and about. Like, it's between, it, well, it, it won't be able to do GPS tracking because it's uh, the way they work is just RFID. So you have to have an RFID reader. Um, and so the re reader has to be within a certain proximity of the chip that's in your hand or in your arm or wherever they're putting it. Mm -hmm. um, but those readers are getting more and more powerful. So you can, you know, read those over multiple hundreds of feet versus just being within a proximity if you have a strong enough um, antenna um, and ignite the little RFID um, electrons in there to make it give up its ID. Uh, so, you know, it's it's definitely kind of one of those things that people are like, oh my goodness, they're going to we go. But you already have a cell phone. Dinette so. is watching. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you already have a cell phone. You already, you know, are getting, you know, China already has a couple of their uh, uh, airports are getting um, retina scanning and biometric scanning for people coming in and out. Like, you can just check in through security by using your face, facial recognition. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's but more bio stuff is going to be uh, used for other things. So this is just, you know, instead of using your fingerprint, instead of using your eyeball, instead of using your voice or your face, it's just another thing you have. So, uh, you know, it's just something that you have that can be checked a little bit outside of your actual body, a little bit farther than condition. So, you know, I, I don't see it as being a big, big issue on, on that sense, but I can understand where people be a little squeamish having something inside of them. Yeah. Uh, I am not, I'm not feeling that. That's for sure. <laughs> but like, touch the thing to, to get your food. Like that's a little crazy. Um, and, and, uh, who knows if, if that, what they can do with that, but yeah, the slippery slope for sure. Um, yeah, no group bathroom breaks. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, I know Mr. Mobile, uh, he has an RFID on his ring mm -hmm. and he, uh, travels the Metro every day. And so he taps the Metro, his Metro pass on the RFID and that's super smart. That's awesome. But if he had that same RFID, he all he'd have to do is tap it with his hand. Spooky. But last year yeah. there was a movie called, I think, The Belko Experiment or something like that. All the employees had a microchip in their head, and someone hacked the system and were killing people uh, through that chip by, uh, like, they would say, like, if you don't kill one of the employees in this room in the next 30 minutes, four of you will die. Like this crazy, it was like a thriller movie, like the Saw meets the office type thing where uh, it was a social experiment where this guy was killing them if they didn't do certain th things he said, uh, which is crazy. Well, obviously this is, that's way ahead of that, but um, it does, it is a slippery slope. Like Mike said, uh, what are we, what are we going to happen in the future here? But uh, any other thoughts from you, Josh? Uh I initially thought Jeremy was going to be talking about Foxconn uh, going uh, to Wisconsin, <laughs> but oh, well, uh, Trump said it's true, so it's going to happen. Oh yeah, you know? it's I happening. Mean, three thousand jobs in Wisconsin, and thirteen thousand jobs, and you know, <laughs> you know, he talked to Tim Cook because Tim Cook owns Foxconn. You know, so oh yeah, totally. Yeah. 
totally. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I, I just think the company's name is horrible, Biohacks. Uh, and uh, then they could well, have picked the company that has the implants, right? Yeah, there could have been a better picture of the guy uh, with his. Yeah, you know, I know his little like uh, hacker-looking guy. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm obviously not on board with that. So um, I don't want nothing in my body. Nope. But moving right along, on a less uh, sad and scary moment, uh, there's some new renders for. Uh, Pixel 2 that have got me a little tingly here. They're all excited. <laughs> uh, with some crazy colors. It, this is all conjecture. It's hard to know what stuff's real, but dang, does this teal and gold look good. Look at that. Woo! Teal top with, uh, with I mean, a teal bottom with some gold accents. I love it. I'm a big fan. That might be not your colorway that you guys like, but there's like a maroon. There's this hot purpleness like my shirt but my favorite is that is that teal then there's a green um with that so who knows who knows what of these are going to be actually real and you know what it's going to look like but i'm liking the fact that they're doing um some different different colorways i, I the the pixel was kind of a little boring with some of its looks and how it did before so if they're doing some of these these looks, hot dang, people are, are gonna like the change here, especially if they do uh, like an Infinity display like that, very similar to the S8, and it does have have uh, those small bezels and and that look. I'm I'm all for it. But what do you guys think of these new renders? Hey, I mean it's a uh, an attractive looking back, but you know I'm still gonna throw a case on it, so I'm not gonna be seeing it, but. The MKBHDs of the world are going to be like, "Woo, that's a nice <laughs> naked phone." Yeah, I mean, this is a type of phone that I would want to put a clear back on, you know, like a clear case on, because my V20 has just a a very bland silver back. I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to put a case on it. But something like this, that color looks great. So I would want to put a, a a clear case on it, which still don't always look as good, but it's something. I think the probability of Google having more than uh, two color SKUs, I don't know. It, it seems, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll put 20%. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this being more of renders of people that are just hoping that this happens. Um, I, I think know. the black and uh, the black one that looks so smooth is going to be there. I think the white ones are going to be there. I would, I would love and... them to have four colors, like one off set crazy one like this. And then a black yeah. one and a white one. I would love for them to have something like this, but you're you're right. The probability is probably a low twenty percent or so for them to do something crazy like that. But a guy can just dream. Means, means brand the brand will just have you know these come out that look exactly like this. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, but it's but... hard to do that glass overlay with that gold though, and the gold inlay obviously you wouldn't have unless you're taking it apart and replacing parts, you know. <laughs> But. Yeah, I mean, why can't D Brand just put little little bit of uh, sparkles on there? You know, <laughs> <laughs> good stuff though. Good but morning. any other information, anything that you guys want to add to the to the tech talkery as we wrap up here? Oh, good to go. I think I'm good. I'm just gonna go back and play some Fortnite, yo. What? Oh, yeah, so be checking out some some live streams on Joshua uh, 14's channel. Jeremy's going to have uh, some bloggy blog goodness and all your business and marketing IT needs over at OmniTechPro.com. Any other things to add, y'all? Joel, we're going to make you a uh, lower third, okay? We're gonna yeah. Make you one. Uh, they, these cool cats with their lower thirds, their <laughs> newfangled uh, technologies. Uh, Mike still <laughs> wants that Hesla Bros album. You know, we'll bring back Umbop and we'll bring back the brothers. The brothers, the brothers, they ain't no other. <laughs> Hot dang. Hot dang. We'll it's sound and fire. EP coming out soon. Look for it. End of August. Early September. <laughs> Bitten fire on it's this. Be on CD fire. Baby. iTunes. It's going to be out there. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's going to be on um, LimeWire only. <laughs> we'll we'll have to have a Facebook poll on uh, what style we'll do, you know. Between yeah. reggae, uh, uh, punk, 
I'm only rhyming uh, over fat uh, trap beats, bro. Hey. Well, you know, it's the only way to do it. All right, friends. It has been fun. It has been a great time for talking them techs. Love me some brothers, bro tech talk. But thank you all for watching. Hope you check out some of the content soon. And we will see you all in the next episode. You're keeping it classy with the brothers tech talk.